JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, two wanted men captured in Kingston. Two wanted men were captured by the Specialized Operations Branch in separate operations in Kingston on Friday, August 27. One of the men, 25-year-old Jovan Francis, otherwise called Kilikili of Sharp Drive, Kingston, has since been charged for illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. Francis was arrested during an operation that was carried out at his home about 5 a.m. According to reports, during the operation, a search was conducted and one Taurus 9mm pistol with two magazines containing 11 9mm rounds were found. Francis was arrested and during processing, it was revealed that he was wanted for the murder of 36-year-old Conroy McCoy of Havana Drive, Kingston, that was committed on Wednesday, January 6. He was subsequently charged. His court date is being finalized. The team then conducted a raid up Bogle Pathway in Kingston, where two men were taken into custody. One of them, Trevor Dean, otherwise called Ramon of Whitehall in Kingston, is wanted by the St. Andrew North Criminal Investigations Branch on several counts of murder. The other man was processed and released. Investigations are ongoing. 20-year-old Clarendon man charged after attempting to rob Cabby. 20-year-old Mark Easy of Bustamante Highway in Clarendon has been charged with robbery with aggravation following an incident on Paisley Avenue in the parish on Saturday, August 21, 2021. Reports from the Maple Police are that about 10 a.m., the complainant, a taxi operator, was at a taxi stand when four people, three men and a woman, boarded his taxi along the journey. The men forced the female from the motor vehicle and placed the gun at the complainant's head. It is alleged that Easy then took control of the vehicle. However, whilst travelling along Pace the Avenue, there was a toss between the taxi operator and the robbers and the vehicle crashed into a building. The complainant managed to escape and reported the matter to the police. Easy was found unconscious inside the motor vehicle by citizens who took him to the hospital. He was placed on the police guard and later charged after he was pointed out as one of the robbers. The search of the other men continues. 935 Jamaicans killed since the start of the year. Jamaica's murder tally for 2021 has risen to 935 as of Saturday, August 28. This is 83 more homicides or 9.7% increase when compared with the corresponding period in 2020. Murders so far this month have outpaced all of August 2020. Between August 1 and August 28, 2021, the country recorded 103 murders. For the entire month last year, 88 homicides were recorded. The gun continues to be the weapon of choice in murders committed thus far this year, with a firearm being used to claim 796 lives. The police have seized 457 firearms and 6,366 rounds of ammunition during the period under review. Eight children are among those who have been murdered since the start of the year. Trelawney has overtaken Portland as the least murderous parish. Trelawney has recorded nine murders so far, down from 14, whereas Portland recorded 12 homicides, up from eight. St. Andrew South continues to lead in murders with 116 cases, followed by St. James with 106 and Kingston Western with 84. Meanwhile, declines have been recorded in cases of rapes, aggravated assaults, robberies and break-ins. Some 278 rapes have been recorded up to August 28 this year, down from the 396 seen in the corresponding period last year. Aggravated assaults are down to 225 from 275. Some 512 robberies have been recorded compared with 720 and break-ins are at 593 down from 711. Police probing suspected case of suicide at St. James Retirement Home. The police in St. James are probing a case of suspected suicide involving a retired soldier at a retirement home. The police report that 78-year-old Henry McFadden, who was from Brandon Hill in the parish, was found dead at the Appleton Hill facility on Monday. It was reported that about 5.15 a.m., a caregiver went to make checks at the facility and discovered that McFadden was missing. It is further reported that checks were made around the facility and McFadden was found unresponsive below a room with several window panes missing. 
He was taken to hospital where he received treatment, but he later succumbed. Police trying to prevent reprisal after teen murdered in Jones Avenue, Spanish Town. The St. Catherine North Police are trying to prevent a reprisal from residents of Backlands, Jones Avenue, Spanish Town, following the murder of a 15-year-old boy on Monday. Residents were left shocked and angry after the mutilated body of Kevin McKenzie was found near a river bank where he went to dispose of garbage. No motive has been established for the attack, which occurred about 7.30 a.m. Denise Daly, Member of Parliament for St. Catherine Eastern, said residents are worried about their safety as Kevin was a well-loved teen. They can't know what is the motive. If he was not supposed to throw away any garbage, he would not be out of his house. He stays in because he believes it is safer to be in than to be out. And his life is snatched away in such a brutal way. Where's our heart? She bemoaned. Probe on after off-duty cop fatally shoots man in St. Catherine. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, responded to and began investigations into the fatal shooting of an unidentified man in the vicinity of Bogwalk Gorge and Stagoville Main Road in St. Catherine on Saturday, August 28, 2021, by an off-duty police officer. The police have reported that an off-duty officer became engaged in the pursuit of a Toyota Pro Box with three male occupants who had allegedly stolen cable wires. During the chase, the Toyota Pro Box collided with a vehicle traveling in the opposite direction. Indicom investigators were further informed that two of the occupants of the Pro Box ran from the incident scene and at least one of the men is reported to have fired at the police officer. It is alleged that the third man approached and attacked the officer with a knife, causing him an injury. The officer reportedly fired at the man with a knife. This unidentified man was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Two persons from the other vehicle involved in the collision were treated for their injuries. The incident scene was processed by Indicom and the weapon of the officer, as well as the recovered knife, were boxed and sealed for testing. The hands of the deceased were swabbed for gunshot residue. No gun was reported as recovered from the scene. An initial account of the incident was provided to Indicom investigators by the off-duty officer. The officer was issued a Section 21 notice to furnish a statement and attend Indicom to be interviewed in relation to this incident. All initial accounts received by the Commission are recognized as preliminary information and will undergo the requisite investigative and forensic examination. Indicom said the assistance of the public is also important and persons are therefore reminded to contact the Commission and share any information that will be useful in ongoing investigations. Police urge people to exercise caution when pursuing certain job offers. Jamaica Constabulary Force, sub-officer in charge of the anti-tip vice squad, Detective Inspector Kamisha Gordon, is appealing to citizens to exercise diligence when pursuing certain advertised job offers. She stated that the unit is aware of people being victims of human trafficking locally as a result of dubious job opportunities taken up. We want to implore persons to follow our ABCs, accept nothing, believe nothing, and check everything. And if you're still uncertain, double check. A lot of what is advertised within these job offerings is questionable. And if you look a little deeper, you'll see that there's something wrong with these offers. So be diligent and verify, she cautioned. Inspector Gordon shared the profile of advertised jobs that have proven to be most problematic. The ones that are of concern primarily are those that offer muscles job opportunities at a location that is not disclosed or instructs persons to call a number and then meet at a suspicious location. The wording is usually looking for persons who are attractive and open-minded. Those are the ones primarily that are worrisome, she informed. Inspector Gordon urged Jamaicans to be cautious and aware about their security when pursuing these advertised opportunities. If you're looking for a job, scrutinize every requirement in the job offers that you see. Those that require you to be open-minded and attractive are the types of requirements that jump out our unit, she added. Inspector Gordon said the unit has embarked on several initiatives, including discussions with critical stakeholders to combat human trafficking via questionable job offers. We're hoping that we can get banned from the media, specifically print media, for screening of the advertisements that are placed within their newspapers, as that is an important place to start. There are other activities that the police have embarked on 
and we're hoping to see some results soon, she indicated. People who suspect incidents of human trafficking and or are victims may call the police within their area to make a report. They can also call the Ministry of National Security at 876-906-4908 or speak to child counselors at the Child Protection and Family Services Agency. 729 new COVID cases, 8 more deaths in Jamaica. Jamaica recorded 729 new cases of COVID-19 and 8 additional deaths on Monday. This brings the total number of confirmed cases in the island to 68,131 and the death toll to 1,518. According to the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the deaths include two women ages 59 and 67 and a 73-year-old man from Westmoreland, two women ages 41 and 77 and a 58-year-old man from Kingston and St. Andrew, a 70-year-old woman from Hanover and a 68-year-old man from St. Catherine. Of the 729 newly reported cases, there were 436 females and 293 males with ages ranging from 3 days to 99 years. The cases were recorded in St. James 141, Kingston and St. Andrew 116, St. Catherine 98, Westmoreland 78, Chelani 48, Clarendon 44, Hanover and St. Elizabeth 43 each, St. Thomas 39, St. Mary 37, Manchester 22, Portland 20, and St. Anne 2. The country also recorded 123 recoveries, bringing the total recoveries to 48,309. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.